Hey folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse, we talk about movies, music, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the self-titled debut album from the band Echo Bench. But first, I'd like to start this review with a necessary clarification that I really didn't think was necessary until fairly recently, specifically in some of the comments that were posted on certain reviews. This is not a response to these comments, and I will not be naming any names, but I do feel I need to get something off my chest before I get into the real meat of this review. Trust me, it does all tie together in the end. And here it is. One of the big reasons that my reviews are so long, at least in comparison with others, is that I want to ensure that people going through them are completely informed regarding my state of mind before I dive into what I like and what I dislike about the certain albums. I want all of my cards to be on the table in full view, and since I prize honesty above pretty much everything, I want to make sure that you're all aware of all the factors that could potentially influence my opinion one way or another. Now, this has led to a criticism that I didn't really expect. The comment that since I went into said reviews with expectations, I was thus unfair to the artist in question. And there's a simple response to this. Yeah, I did go in with ideas and potentially even expectations regarding what said albums might entail. I'm a human being, and it would be intellectually and emotionally dishonest for me to curtail those expectations and not speak without a fully informed opinion that is uniquely my own. Now that being said, there is a marked difference between expectations and keeping an open mind. And this is where I think that the majority of said comments miss the real point behind my reviews. Sure, I might have gone in with expectations, but I was open and very willing to believe that I might be wrong in some capacity. I never go into reviews wanting to hate something. If anything, I want to be proven wrong. I want the artist to step up and smash all my preconceived opinions about their work. I want to be crawling on the ground, coming up to them saying, yo what, I was wrong, you were right. Now is it the artist's job to prove themselves to me exclusively? Well, of course not. But it is the artist's job to make art that is, well, compelling or is informed by some purpose. And it's my job as a critic to interpret that purpose and pass judgment on whether or not it works. And thus, when it comes to every single act, be it country, or hip hop, or metal, or acoustic, or indie rock, or even the shallowest of pop and EDM, I try to keep an open mind and try to understand their appeal. And while I might have creeping feelings of dread opening up some albums, I'm always willing to give them a fair shot, and I'm constantly seeking to improve my knowledge of acts so I can make my judgments fairly. And yet, I'm still going to be able to get excited about some albums, and I'm still going to dread reviewing others. I'm not going to stop having expectations because said expectations inform my opinions, and thus my reviews. And since I am an eternal optimist, yes, an optimist, I will reaffirm my commitment to go into albums with all the hopes for the best. And so, when I got a copy of the debut self-titled album from all-female post-punk trio Echo Bench, and was informed they were reminiscent of acts like Savages and Joy Division, I was excited, I was psyched! I made sure to temper my excitement with some reason forethought here. Indie rock debuts are tricky things, and the high, high standard that Savages set should definitely not be the same for every act in their vein. But look, I was excited, and I was intrigued just the same. So, with all that in mind, how does the Echo Bench debut album turn out? <sighs> look. I wish I could recommend this album. You know, it sucks being the reviewer that has to pan a debut album, particularly from an indie act. But I'm sorry, there's very little here that works on Echo Bench's debut, and it's a hard album for me to like. In fact, it's a hard album to feel much of anything about it at all. Look, it's not terrible, it's not a catastrophe, or even something that inspires a lot of anger from me, but it's definitely not something I like all that much either. If I'm being totally bluntly honest, I have a hard time thinking about anything on this album that I really did enjoy. Now, for a change, let's start with the songwriting, which is arguably the area where Echo Bench have the least amount of problems. Thematically, they're centered around toxic relationships and depression, often a very crippling sense of vulnerability. Where Savages opted for hard-edged, sex-positive, third-wave feminist themes, even though even though Jenny Beth never really acknowledged that, the album seem, this album seems to be treading in somewhat of the opposite direction, with lead singer Noga Schatz's lyrics not really implying a lot of agency or power in said relationships, which manifests in songs like Same Mistake and High Roller and Broken and Liquid Sky. And you know, it's a strikingly depressing album, now, which I do suspect was the point. But then I start raising the question what this depression leads to on a thematic level. I get the feeling that agency was starting to be reclaimed if we followed the 
arc of this album, presuming there was one. First reclaimed sexually on 24, then emotionally on French, with the final overarching conclusion being reached on flesh a bone. But you know what, that's painfully thin, and it doesn't help matters that there really isn't much in terms of technical songwriting, in terms of poetry that sticks out for me on this album. If they're trying to do what Savages did with quick, curt, blunt statements to just stand out and strike you? Well, there's an art to getting that right, and there's an art to have a certain amount of poetry to it. There needs to be that certain harshness in the execution. Echo Bench really aren't quite there yet, and too many of the lyrics feel like they're cribbed from some bad teenage poetry. It's not quite emo, but it's on the borderline here. Now look, part of the problem is that the front woman of Savages, Jenny Beth, is such a powerful presence on the tracks, given center stage and able to match the potent swelling force of her instrumentation. That's one reason why Savages, that debut album, Silence Yourself, was so good. But in comparison, Noga Schatz's vocals are softer and lighter and a little smoother. And while her singing is pretty and occasionally emotional, she doesn't strike me as having experienced or powerful vocals, to say nothing of a commanding presence at the microphone, which, I gotta be honest, is a pretty major problem here. Sure, in most cases it sounds like she's trying, but in the end I'm completely left unmoved and often a little disconcerted at Miss Schatz's delivery. I gotta be honest, she sounds nervous at the microphone. And while there are some songs where that sort of tremulous delivery does work, it's definitely not strong on this album where it really needs to be. Now, granted, the production of this album does her no favors, which takes me to the first huge issue with this album. The production is terrible. For starters, the mix is just flat and lifeless, with very few places for the guitars or the vocals or the drums to really breathe or swell or gain any sort of impact. On top of that, most of the mix is set at the exact same value, which means that Miss Schatz's thinner vocals, thinner and higher vocals, are just drowned out by that harder guitar. But okay, fine. Even if we're going to assume that these production choices were intentional and that they were trying to recreate some sort of lo-fi punk vibe, I have to deliver the harshest criticism of the all. There's little to no texture anywhere in the guitar or in the bass, mostly just swallowed up in reverb and fuzz instead of letting any sort of definitive hook rise to the surface. And you know, that sort of production choice would be fine in a post-punk album if the mix was allowed to gain some sort of brooding energy or heft or approach some sort of wall of sound technique filled specter wise but none of that is here which means i'm left listening to an album that really doesn't develop much for me the best track on this album is french which was remixed by colin newman from the from wire and really it does show but even by that standard it sounds like a low rent wire track at best and here's where i have to drop the final blow and that is in the instrumentation frankly there's little to no coherent hooks on this album that really stuck in my brain that made me want to come back to this album after i re-listened to it a couple of times and that's a real problem when the guitar work and drum work on this album is just very very basic. Part of this is the fault of the production, I get that, but the other big issue is that I'm just left completely unimpressed by any of the instrumentation. Most of the songs have one or two progressions that are repeated ad nauseum throughout the track without any real changes, and it just makes the album get really boring really fast. And what's worse is that the few places where Echo Bench do try to get a little technical, it comes across as just disjointed and sloppy. Now, I get the, I get the point behind a simple song, and that makes sense within a punk or a post-punk atmosphere, but man, it doesn't work here. Look, in the end, I can't recommend Echo Bench's debut. The production's a mess, the vocals are unrefined, the lyrics are rather amateurish, and the instrumentation is completely bland. But look, at the same time, I can't muster up any hatred or even real disappointment with this album, and I will admit that the thin narrative through line of this album was executed, well, reasonably well. Echo Bench suffers when placed in comparison with Savages, but you know, I'd make the argument that that particular comparison isn't really a good one, particularly given the difference in vocals and songwriting direction, which is looking to do something very, very different. And Echo Bench do show a fair bit of promise here, I will say that. So with all that in mind, I'm inclined to be a little bit generous and give them a 5 out of 10, which isn't a recommendation, keep that in mind, but it isn't a warning sign either. Look, if you're a fan of post-punk or noise rock, you can definitely do a lot better in this genre, particularly this year, but you could also do a lot worse. So yeah, bit of a downbeat review, but if you'd like to like and subscribe, um, that'd be great. Thanks for watching. If you've got any other albums that you'd like me to review, go ahead and suggest them, or anything that I might be able to improve in my production, I'd greatly appreciate the advice and support. And until other than, see you next time.